All right, talking more NFL draft as we inch a little bit closer to Thursday night. Pleasure to be joined by NFL.com draft analyst and longtime radio host, ESPN 97.5 here in Houston, Lance Zerline. Lance, good to see you. Hey, this is a crazy week. You're on uh, your way to L.A. tomorrow for all the draft coverage. And uh, I, th I think a lot of people want to know, you, you break this down better than anybody else out there. Where do things stand right now in your opinion and why as far as, as it, when it comes to that number two pick for the Texans? Yeah, I think really they're, they're going to be working through some different things. I think first and foremost, what Nick alluded to, Nick Casario alluded to in his press conference was they will listen to trade offers. And I think the question is, what kind of offers are out there? And yeah. the fact he's listening to trade offers, I mean, for me, is <clears throat> kind of a telltale sign that they're not going to go in the direction of quarterback and pick number two. I just, I think when it comes down to it, they've really got to decide about can we find a trade partner? If so, how far back do we move? Is it uncomfortable to move too far back that we, you know, miss out on the players that we really covet? And if we don't have a trade partner, what does it look like? What are we looking at? And I really think that now I've kind of felt this way since um, April 4th when my, when my last mock draft came out. I think it's going to be end up being between two players, Will Anderson and Tyree Wilson. And I think you know, the tiebreaker could be the safer player is going to be Will Anderson. Most people are going to view it that way, Randy. But, yeah. you know, at the same time, Tyree Wilson fits what D'Amico Ryan's defense did in San Francisco, and he might have a little bit more upside or some growth still to go from a football standpoint. So um, it will be interesting. It's still a wide open, you know, it's wide open. Texans fans really not sure what's going to happen. I don't think any of us do. I want to ask you about the quarterbacks because everybody, all the fans are saying, you've got to take a quarterback. What are you talking right. about? Uh, so Bryce Young, are you are you uh, sticking with Bryce Young, number one, Carolina, I assume? Is that already yeah, going to Yeah, and you know, if, if something happened where C.J. Stroud or Will Levis or somebody else went number one, I think the Texans would race the card up for Bryce Young. I think Bryce Young is the guy that they'd really love to have. I know I'd love for him to be a Houston Texan. Uh, but outside of Bryce Young, if you really don't believe, you know, one of the things that I heard about the Texans about uh, three or four weeks ago is, is that they were really in on Bryce Young, but they didn't maybe love the other quarterbacks as much. I know they had D'Amico has been mentioned. Uh, he had a, an interview where he said there were a couple quarterbacks they like and, you know, they, they'd like to come away with the quarterback. And, and I don't think we can discount that. But I do think that if you don't love a quarterback, you can't just take the quarterback because that can really set you back another three to four years. So if you're going to take one in the first round, you better believe in him. There's something else to watch, Randy. There's Mac Jones may potentially be out there for the Texans. Trey Lance could be out there for the Texans, whether it's this year or next year. So uh, there's, there's more than one way to find your quarterback. It's not always through the draft. All right, so say they go defense like you think they're going to go, uh, Lance, at, at number two with, with Wilson or, um, or Will Anderson. So you, they pop up again number 12. Say, say they stay put at number 12 uh, or maybe move up to a little bit. Who knows? But just um, for our discussion here, they're staying number 12. Right. Where do you think they need to go in that particular slot at number 12? Well, I know the fans are going to be really excited about the, the potential of well, what if Levis or Richardson, especially Richardson, falls to 12. What about them, Lance? But, yeah. you know, something that NFL people will tell you is you can take a player in the, in, in the second pick of the draft or the 22nd pick of the draft, and they're still going to get you fired if you don't develop them. Once you draft a quarterback in the first round, fans expect you, you know, to develop them and for them to be the quarterback of the future. So whether you believe in them enough to draft them second or 22nd, the same expectations are going to be expected. So I, I think if you're not going to draft a quarterback at two, I don't think you'll draft a quarterback at 12. Don't be shocked that the Texans go defense again. I think deep, defense wins championships. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to get deep in defense, you know, deep into the playoffs, building a defensive front is very important. The Texans – their defense front's nowhere near what it needs to be. They've got a new scheme coming in with D'Amico Ryan. So I wouldn't be shocked to see them go Anderson or Levis with the first pick. And then if it's Anderson, maybe go with a guy like Lucas Van Ness out of Iowa. Mm -hmm. Or if it's Tyree Wilson with the first pick, maybe going with a guy like Nolan Smith out of Georgia. Kind of a, a big and smaller guy combination there on the defensive front. All right, a couple more questions uh, re regarding that number 12. And I, I don't know where you have B. John Robinson going, but say he's available at 12. Do the Texans say, thanks but no thanks, 
as, as a, what appears to be a lock in B. John Robinson in his town. Where do you have him going, and could he be out there perhaps for the Texans? You know, he could be there. I just I feel like when you look at the Texans needs, um, they could they, they need a center. They need a guard. They need mm -hmm. wide receiver help. They could use another defensive back. They could use another linebacker in terms of linebacker um, uh, depth. They could use a tight end. Bichon would be great. But, you know, would it be a little bit of overkill with what we saw from Damian Pierce? Um, absolutely. Then again, you could you could run a two headed monster in people. And if you're trying to win without a, a premier quarterback, you might want to really be able to run the ball. I can tell you this, the sting of not getting a quarterback at number two, if the Texans pass on quarterback would be eased a little bit. If you did take B. John Robinson, I'm not expecting him to go there. I do think B. John could go as early as eight, maybe as late as, you know, 50 or rather like 16 uh, to the, to, to the commanders. But, man, if, if Texans did draft B. John Robinson, I mean, the fan base would be so excited. I just – I think it's a little bit of a long shot, though. Right, last question, uh, uh, Lance. Uh, you, you know the whole league inside out, Texans specifically. How much pressure is it on GM Nick Casario to get these picks right and the influence now that D'Amico Ryans will be in that uh, decision-making room with him? Well, I mean, that's a great question. I think I think there's a tremendous amount of pressure on him to get this right. I think last year, you know, you ended up having the guy picked one spot after you picked Stingley ends up becoming the defensive player of the year and an all pro, or I'm sorry, defensive rookie of the year and Sauce Gardner. So I think that increases the pressure on Nick Casario to get it right, which is why they may play it a little safer with Will Anderson to pick number two. But at the same time, I think in terms of the dynamics with D'Amico Ryan's, I think D'Amico has a feel for what he wants to do defensively. And Bobby Sloan comes from an offense that in some ways has some similarities to the old Gary Kubiak days. I mean, there's some similar concepts in terms of the West Coast, uh, um, the West Coast scheme and system that where Sloan comes from in San Francisco. Of course, Kyle Shanahan called plays here with Gary Kubiak in 2009. So I think that there's a specific type of player that the Texans are going to look for offensively. So I think we'll get dialed in here philosophically on offense in what terms of what types of players you want. And then defensively, I think the same thing's going to happen. I haven't felt like Texans have had a great um, cohesiveness in terms of bringing in the talent to the defensive and offensive schemes. I think we will definitely get that now with D'Amico Ryan and Bobby Sloak. I think we'll, we'll see them drafting players that really fit what they like to do. Well, we can't wait. NFL Draft is going to arrive on Thursday. Again, Lance, Zerline, NFL.com. Look forward to your uh, last mock coming out, I would believe, what, Thursday morning, right? And Thursday then morning, the last one. <laughs> I'll, I'll be glad when that's done. And then it's go time Thursday night. Hey, appreciate your insight as always, Lance. Uh, you know this is a draft inside out. and Look forward to your coverage on NFL Network, NFL.com. Appreciate the time, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, Randy.